Good morning from the Cottage Farmstead. My name is Nathan Vinette, and I'm warming up by the fire this morning before heading out to do some important chores. So we're in the process of preparing for getting some cattle on the land for raising up for meat. But part of that is establishing where our property lines are, what type of fence is there to see what type of condition it is, and clearing a place for uh, new fence lines because one of the infrastructures that are important for cows is having a good fence. So I'll show you the tools that we like to use for that. And then we'll also be pruning back some of the branches on our property along the fields just to try to reclaim some of the grass and add some more silver pasture or mixed pasture area to give the cows some area in the shade. So we'll go ahead and head outside and I'll show you the perimeter of the property that we are starting to work on. The first field that we want to get the cows in is what we're calling the north field. So this is the field that is above the driveway which is right there leading up to the house and it goes all the way along to the wood line that you can see in the background there. So those are the woods there which and there uh, our neighbors have a fence already there that we've been trying to clear out all the bramble and brush around it just to see what the condition of the fence is in and so that we can help maintain it as well. Over on this side, our property abuts uh, old church's property, which has a cemetery, which we actually really like. We found one of our posts here, which you can see with the flag. Uh, and we want to try to put our fence as close to our line as possible. That way it's just easy to maintain where our property boundary is. So we went ahead uh, and cleared a line. You can see where we have some posts up here just to make it easy to get that fence established as much as possible. So with the help of my father-in-law we were able to make our way through a bunch of different brush. We have this briar down here in South Carolina called green briar. It is just really gnarly, has really sharp thorns that are positioned in such a way that if you try to like walk through it, it just snags your clothing and it's such a pain because it's very strong. You can't easily break it. So you either need a pair of loppers or an ax just to hack your way through it. So it seemed at times that we were going through thickets that were so thick that you could bundle it together with your hand and it would fill your hand with those vines. Thankfully, we weren't punctured too many times and only encountered fire ants once. Uh, but we're hoping the rest of the ordeal will be a little bit easier now that we have the fence line here fairly cleared out. One thing that I was very excited to find out is we have some black locusts on the property. Uh, those trees right there that are leaning a little bit are a couple there and we have several more throughout the property line. We love black locusts because it is in the legume family so it fixes nitrogen but it's also an excellent tree to have on the property for making fence posts out of. And especially with establishing a fence line, we're going to select some of those trees to sustainably harvest for the purpose of building our fence. Since we now have a wood stove, one thing that has been very enjoyable for myself is seeing the value of some of the different shrubs that we've been taking down or different branches that would otherwise just be pushed into a brush pile and burned, all of a sudden it has value for us. So like this branch right here, I'll be cutting that up a bit later just to add to our uh, wood pile storage. So then we can continue to keep our house warmer and try to ease off on our HVAC uh, costs as much as possible. One other thing we're watching out for as we're clearing the fence line in these woods and all the woods surrounding our farm is just watching out to see if we have any black cherry trees because black cherry leaves are quite poisonous to cows and can kill them actually. So we're trying to make sure that we're taking those out just to maintain a healthy place for our cows to thrive. So here is actually one that we took down. Uh, the nice thing is with spoon carving or spatula carving, I really like the color and smell of cherry wood. So I'll be utilizing a lot of this for that purpose. Anything that is too large will go ahead and turn into firewood as uh, cherry wood will burn quite readily in the fireplace. And over here we have the fence line that is on the far side of our sh small woods. Uh, you can see the fiberglass posts and the, some of the fence here. Most of it seems to be in good condition, but before we started clearing out, you could barely see these fiberglass posts from our side of the property. So we went ahead and just made it basically a walking trail, the whole length of it that we could, uh, to make it easy to monitor the fence, make sure that, okay, if a tree falls down, we can see it and take care of it quickly. Because one thing we want to make sure is that our cows do not go into the potentially greener pastures if it, they ever turn that way of our neighbors over here. So 
Maintaining a good fence line is critical, so we're just trying to do work here and now before we get cows on the property. So you can see all through here, it is much easier to walk. And what we're hoping as well is to clear out some of the shrubby stuff. We have some different invasive plant species just to try to encourage different natives to grow. But in addition to that, uh, we also want to have a place for the cows to come during the heat of the summer to keep cool. So here we can, you can see we have different holly. Those have intense needles on them. They're very thick and hard to uh, work with because they'll snag your gloves pretty good. And over here, that green you see right there is some of that green briar that it's just nasty. It'll actually pull down trees. It looks like it did so with a lot of the black cherries that were in this forest area. So we're just hoping to continue to clear that out, make it easier to manage, more enjoyable to get back here, and also turn it into a usable resource for our cattle. As we were progressing up this line, you can see all of a sudden there's an incredibly thick thicket over there. You can barely see the fence over in that direction. Since we're hoping to get cows relatively soon, we decided to stop the fence line at this fiberglass post and went ahead and cleared a line here to go up to the field. That way we can maximize our time still give the cows plenty of woods over here and just saving this project over here for a rainy day uh, as that is going to take some intense time and care especially since you can't see it but there's several large trees back in there that have fallen and are dead and many of them are leaning up against each other which makes it quite challenging and dangerous to take them down so we will be working on that but for now for expedience we will save that for another day so here's one of the black locust trees that have actually already fallen. It looks like the wood's in relatively good conditions. We're hoping to get a couple of fence posts out of that. It is challenging because it is has a couple of weird bends in it, but we'll turn the rest of it that's not usable for fence posts into firewood just to continue to fuel our wood stove. Over in this direction, you can see how all the trees have been just overshadowing and growing into the field. So that's okay to a certain extent but the problem is it's so thick down by the woods that grass will stop to grow it's hard for the cows to get there where it might offer some shade so i'm going to go ahead today and prune back all the branches that are low back to the wood line to where the trees are just to give the animals some area for shade but also hopefully encourage some sort of a silver pasture to grow up this is also vitally important for this side of the wood line because since we're coming out of the woods right here with our fence line, we are then going to go up along this wood line. Rather than having to put the fence out in the field with all the branches there, we're going to try to push those branches back to reclaim as much of the pasture as possible and hopefully add some additional grazing area for the cows in years to come. For this work, the two tools that I have found to be uh, very helpful is just a pair of loppers but then we also have this small battery operated chainsaw what i like about the small chainsaw it's much lighter than a larger one and with the smaller blade it's safer for working with small limbs because you're not having as much uh area surface area of the blade uh exposed so we just like to have safety in mind my dad has been kind enough to let us borrow this uh and it's been very helpful and this is what i'll probably use 90 percent of the time for clearing this wood line so let's go ahead and get started. So here you can see, just with cutting this back, I've easily gained at least 10 to 12 feet of additional pasture land that will hopefully encourage more grass to grow underneath the trees. I'm pruning up the trees pretty high, just so then if we get pieces of equipment along the edge of the field, it's much easier to get in here and maintain this space. We'll also be making a couple of paths <clears throat> through the woods over to the fence line that way we can get a tractor back there or 
different vehicles as needed to maintain that fence line. So for we're trying to think ahead to make things as easy as possible. So then for the longevity, it's easier to maintain. Another component that we're looking forward to is by clearing and thinning this area out, especially of all the invasive species, we can be intentional with replanting it with trees that we want. We'd love to get different types of hickory nuts in here. There's been a couple of chestnuts that we've been wanting to encourage. That way, eventually, if we're running uh, pigs on the property, we can run them under and have them forage for the acorns. Uh, Chinkapin acorns are in particular sweet. The tannin levels are much lower, so the animals tend to like those a lot better. But we also want to get some uh, black locusts established in here as well for uh, just future proofing and enabling us to sustainably harvest from those for fence posts in the future. One fun thing about the black locust, it does two things. You can take cuttings from them relatively easy. Uh, so there, that's one way to propagate them and get a tree established much quicker than by seed. But secondly, if you cut a tree down, it has a tendency to do something, I'm not sure how it's exactly pronounced. I think it's called coppicing or coppicing, where after you cut it, it'll actually send up a bunch of shoots around it. So one tree all of a sudden can send up five to 10 saplings around it, which you can maintain. And eventually that could be five to 10 fence posts that you have for sustainable harvest throughout the future. So we're looking forward to getting that established here. It is a long-term uh, investment into the land, but there's no time like the now to start planting those trees to reap the reward sooner rather than later. There's also scattered throughout some young cedars uh, that will actually encourage to grow for fence post production. The challenging thing is we are hoping to produce some different fruit crops on the property and cedar rust is quite an issue with uh, growing like peaches, for instance, or pears here in the southeast. So we'll need to manage them for the health and any impact if they are infected, being sure to try to naturally take care of that so that it doesn't spread to our orchard, which will be up on top of the hill close to the homestead. <music> Well, thank you for joining us on this beautiful day. Uh, we're very excited to get some animals on the land. That is one thing that is so healing for the land, especially since we're hoping to do some rotational grazing, very similar to Joel Salatin's method and what you've seen other homesteaders do, as we're hoping with that intensive grazing just to help uh, maintain the land, get the manure where it needs to be, rather than having to take the time and effort to collect it and spread it. So as you can see, we're making great progress. I probably cleared at least 100 feet of line here in only about 20 minutes. Time investment now will definitely save time and help invest in the land, reclaim some more pasture. So we're very excited about that. Well, stay tuned. We'll have a lot of exciting videos and hopefully in the near future, some cows coming to our homestead.